let's talk about inflection points. Inflection points occur when the concavity of a function changes. In other words, a function that's concave up changes to concave down. Here's an example. This would be concave up, 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 down, 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 down. Right at that moment when the concavity changes, that would be an inflection point. Perhaps your function looks like this. Here we go. Concave down, 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 up, 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 up. There's an inflection point. So an inflection point happens when the concavity of a function changes. Now, if you recall, concavity has to do with how the slope of a function is changing. A function is concave up when the slope is increasing. So here, the slope of this function is increasing, and now the slope is decreasing. Well, if I'm talking about the change in a slope, that's the same as the change in a derivative, and that means the derivative of a derivative. Well, what do we call the derivative of a derivative? The second derivative, right? So an inflection point occurs when the second derivative of a function changes sign. It's really that straightforward. An inflection point here happens because I'm going from second derivative, a positive second derivative, to a negative second derivative. The sign of the second derivative changes at that inflection point. Same thing here. This is down, 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 up, 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 up. So my second derivative here went from negative to positive. So inflection points occur when the sign of the second derivative changes. Let's just remember concavity. When your second derivative is greater than zero, then your function is concave up, which makes sense because a function is concave up when the derivative or the slope is increasing. So the derivative is changing in a positive way. So that's why the second derivative is positive. The second derivative is negative. When the second derivative is negative, then your function is concave down. Your slope or your first derivative is decreasing. And inflection points can occur, not necessarily, but they can occur when the second derivative is zero or when the second derivative is undefined. Let's look a little bit more into this, shall we? No regrets, Coyote. We just come from such different sets of circumstances. I'm a Here's a nice cortic. Let's find any inflection points. Okay, so let's think about how we're going to do this. If we want to figure out where the second derivative changes from positive to negative, or from negative to positive, what might be a good way to begin? Let's find candidates for inflection points by figuring out when the second derivative is zero or when the second derivative is undefined. Because that's why are those candidates? Well, and our examples here, here it looked like, rump, right? I went from positive to negative. Well, to go from positive to negative, what happens? Oh, at that moment, my second derivative is zero. Here I'm going from negative to positive. By looking at that graph, I'm pretty sure my second derivative is undefined, right? Because it looks like my first derivative is undefined. So my second derivative would have to be undefined. So. Let's find candidates for the inflection points by finding the second derivative and seeing where it equals zero or where it's undefined, okay? So I'm just gonna take the derivative of g of x, and I'm taking the second derivative, g 
just taking the derivative of the derivative. And now I want to see where this equals zero or where it's undefined. Well, that's not ever going to be undefined. Let's set that equal to zero. Okay. So I know that the second derivative equals zero at x equals zero. Can I conclude that the, this is an inflection point? No, I can't. Because an inflection point is not defined as a place where the second derivative is zero or where it's undefined. It's defined as a change in concavity. So I need to demonstrate that there actually has been a change in concavity. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to set up a little number line, kind of like what we did when we were finding relative minimums and maximums. I'm going to put my potential inflection point there, my x value. And let's pick values on either side. And now I'm going to plug in these values into the second derivative to get a sense of if the function is concave up or concave down. So here I have 12x squared. I'm going to replace that x with a negative 1. Oh, that gives me something positive. That means that my function g of x is concave up at that moment. Let's plug in 1. Oh my goodness, I'm getting something positive again. So this function, this cortic, evidently is concave up over its whole domain. So I would say g of x has no inflection points since f double prime of x is greater than zero for its whole domain. There was no change in the second derivative, which means that the slope is always increasing. There was no change in concavity. And if we want, we can take a look at the graph of this. Just going to be lazy and plug this into my calculator. Oh, yeah, that's a weird looking graph. But sure enough, it's weird looking, but it's always concave up. Now this sometimes baffles people. So let's just look at a couple quick examples here and we can intuitively make sense of this. Here we have clearly a function that's concave up. The slope is increasing, so the second derivative is positive. Then we have a cusp, so I know the first derivative is undefined, which means the second derivative is gonna be undefined. And then here we still have a slope that's increasing. This is still concave up. The slope is increasing, so my second derivative is still positive. So here's an example of a place where the second derivative is undefined and there's no inflection point. Here's a place like just your standard y equals x to the fourth. The second derivative is zero at x equals zero, but clearly we can see that this function is concave up at x equals zero. So it is possible to have the second derivative be undefined or to have the second derivative equal zero and for there to not be an inflection point, which is why we look for candidates and then we test to see if it actually is an inflection point. Let's do one more example. Okay, here's a nice cubic. I'm going to find candidates first, find possible inflection points. And that's when the second derivative is zero or undefined. I have a nice polynomial, so I don't think I'm going to have to worry about undefined. So I'm going to take the first derivative and then the derivative of the derivative. Okay. To find possible inflection points, I'm going to set the second derivative equal to zero. So there we go. Four sixths or two thirds. Is that an inflection point? I don't know. We will only know if we can confirm that the second derivative changes sign. So I'm going to do my little number line. I'm labeling it. So I'm finding values of the second derivative. Um, let's see, let's just plug a nice 
easy numbers, zero and one. So when x is zero in the second derivative, that's six times zero minus four, that gives me something negative. So I know my functions can't keep down. When I plug in one into my second derivative, six times one minus four, ooh, that's positive. Can't give up. So yes, f of x has an inflection point at x equals two thirds since f double prime of x changes from negative to positive at x equals two thirds. There you have it. Early on your ranch, you'll be brushing out a broodmare's tail.